People deluded, I'm back again. Young Christian Bielik, Arsenal player, on loan at Charlton, 20 turning 21 in January. He's a young player, he arrived here at 18 years of age to much hype as he would any player that joins a top six side. And I believe he can have a future here. The problem is time is running out. He arrived here at, what, 17, 18. He's 20 turning 21. And if you consider where he plays both in midfield, I do believe there's a gap because I believe, I believe only Torreira in this side and El Nene to a degree are what you'd call midfielders who can break down play. I feel with Bielik, while he's got problems with his agility, he was a midfielder, he's been converted to a centre-half. I do believe on the basis that there's a there's a missing gap in the squad for another person like that. If he if Unai Emery takes a shine to him, he could possibly have a future here. I mean, he can play centre half and in def and in defensive midfield. In midfield, there's a lot of competition, or do you know even a lot lot of competition, just a lot of bodies both on loan and at the first cl at the club at first team level in both positions. So it's tough. So as you'd expect, under twenty three football, he's left that at he needs he's at an age where he needs to play. I'm above that because I must admit he's a great player but he's probably too cocky in possession and he needs to learn when to and not to play, something which he's, he has issues with. Um, and he's still struggling for consistency or that he, uh, in the sense that he has been playing well when he's given a chance for Charlton. He's had injury issues as well. He really needs to stay fit if he wants to have a chance here. But he was substituted at half-time in, in his last match for, for um for Charlton and to which his manager Lee Bolio said actually said former former Premier League player for Birmingham and a couple other clubs said Bielik was actually he played forty five minutes like I said and he was playing in a diamond at the base of it so in defensive mid he said Christian Bielik is normally good at sitting at the bottom of the diamond but today he took too many touches and kept getting caught in possession that is something that stayed with him for a while I've seen that happen at under twenty three level I've even seen that if you remember against Lens when he played. Um, a couple of seasons ago in pre-season, he uh, one of the goals came from that. He's very skilled with bringing it out from the back and playing, and he's he's a very much a modern day defender or a modern day player in the sense he's very cultured. He wants to play, and you want to see that. Of course, he hangs onto it too long, plays passes he doesn't need to play. But at this age, this is he's young. He's still young. He's he's. It feels like a race against time, but he's still young. He just needs to really learn balance. For me, that's the only thing stopping him. If he learns balance and he learns when to do certain things and he stays fit together with just getting more experience to combat his inexperience he can have a yeah he can have a future boy boy has gone on to say he needs to learn that you have to move the ball quickly because that's the way we play not just him everyone was poor in the first half so fair enough this is football you can get away with several things at under 23 level to be fair with you because if he made if he was making these mistakes you can you can get away with it you might get a talking to by your manager you might still win and things like that um, I guarantee you he's learnt more he's probably obviously he's learnt from his mistakes that he's probably made at Premier, at, um, Premier League 2 level with Arsenal but I guarantee you that that experience of being subbed at half time has done more for his experience than any under 23 football could have done for him in the last two two years or so because you will remember that feeling of, of being substituted whether it was for a legitimate tactical reason or for a loss of form I don't advocate breaking people mentally but he's playing for want of better words, and not sound like a dinosaur, men's football now. People are trying to fight to pay their bills and, and keep afloat as a football club. It's not just nice little pretty Arsenal where you've got the nice tracksuits and you're playing with the hope of getting into the first team and it's all encouraged to play out the back. You play out from the back, but you need balance. He'll remember that. You're a footballer. Nobody wants to be subbed after 45 minutes. That probably left a bad taste in his mouth. For someone that initially um, out child and he was getting a lot of game time and it seems like he's in and out the squad from when when I look at him every now and again. He's having probably having issues constantly being moved between centre-half and defensive mid, defensive mid and centre-half. But it is what it is. On one hand... You do believe he needs he can play both positions. Competent footballers can play multiple positions, and I do believe there's a spot in the squad for him. Um, is is diminishing, but there's a squat. There's a spot. Sorry. Um, but the other um, strain of that is he needs to learn his craft playing in one position. But this is the harsh reality of football. He'll remember the feeling. And obviously, um, I don't necessarily believe Boyle might necessarily be the right manager for him. But at least he's playing it fair. Because if you remember against Barnsley or so a few weeks ago, or whenever they last played, he praised Christian, Christian for it. He said, Christian raised the game so well for someone so young. He said, he doesn't panic. He makes me panic at times because he dribbles past people. And I'm thinking, don't do that. But he does it, and that's the confidence of the lad. That's what you want, man. You want, you need to be confident. The problem now is just balance, knowing when to do it and when not to. Because, like he said, if you got substituted forty five minutes um, against Charlton, imagine he did similar things under similar circumstances in, in his first start for Unai Emery. 
You know, everyone might believe in him, but once you lose someone's trust and you know you can't believe in him again, you won't see him at first team level because that's what happens to a lot of young players. Um, he went then went on to say he's got he got cramp at the end. We've got to be careful with him. That's what he that's what he did the first time he started playing for us. Got cramp, 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 and then he started pulling his calf. We're going to have to watch him. I don't know if he'll be able to play on Tuesday. I thought he was outstanding. The whole back four outstanding. So fitness, he needs to be able to cope with both playing at high demand, high intensity football. I'm not a physio, but he needs to, someone at Arsenal. I'd like to think needs to help him through his injury problems or. Um, it seems like re he he's one of them. He gets these little nicks and these little ones here and there. And obviously, when you keep getting these sort of injuries, the weeks and the days add up. When you look back at the end of the season, and that's not good for his development because he needs to play as much games as possible. So if someone, I don't know if it's a case of eating differently, training differently, different training schedules, doing certain things different. I don't know what it is, but hopefully he can get over that and, and, and have a chance of making it. Because I believe in the guy. I believe he's going to have a good career, whether it's at Arsenal or not. Admittedly, I don't think it's going to happen at Arsenal now. I want him to, but it, if I, if I, without sounding pessimistic, it seems like he won't get his opportunity, which is a shame because he can play at the, in the back, he can play in midfield. We, it, it, there's a spot, like I said, in defensive mid. If we want, ever wanted to play free at the back, he could actually be of importance to us again. But 20 years of age, turning 21, I'm sure his contract runs out in 2020, so a decision will need to be made. He turns 21 in January, which um, we've seen Coughlin make it here after delayed absence. Um, I think he just needs experience. We might need to, him to get a chance next season or go on loan again. But at this age, you need to find some stability somewhere, a club that trusts you and things like that. If you're not ready to start at 19, like Wenger said, you'll never be ready. And he has been, but the chance hasn't hasn't been there. I don't think it's going to happen for him. I'd love to be wrong, clearly, people. But you got you lot trust me to give you my honest opinion, and that's what I feel. But either way, you can learn from this. This is what a lot of footballers are having to learn about. It's not about being able to dance up. If you're an attacking player, dance up past 10 players at, at under-23 level if you can't do it at first team. And even if you can do it at first team level, if you haven't got balance, there's no point. This is what many footballers see, fail to understand. If you're sick at under-23 level and you're dancing past 10 players, you go into first team and you dance past 10 players, that's cool. Um... You might you might dance past ten players and score two goals, but if your team in that same match concede three, with the winner be winner being you, try to dance past ten players again, losing the ball and they counter attack, you might lose your manager's trust. It's these things that happen. It's the same way that Wenger, in fact, not Wenger. I used to like Gabriel, but I lost faith in him when that season when we was losing to Palace, Liverpool. There was like three away games in on the trot, and it, I believe it was the Palace one which I really thought, "Ah, right, you're done." Obviously, I'm not the manager, but if I imagine I was, he would never play a game again. It's similar to Chesney at Arsenal. Different circumstances, admittedly, slightly. But Wenger loved him. Ultimately, the Southampton game and maybe his conduct off the field was the final straw. And it doesn't matter how good someone believes in you or how good you might be. Once someone loses confidence in you, it's that. And typically, young players, that's what young players are fighting against. It's mad because people can admit that they're young, good players, but... They can't get experience unless they gain experience. And because they've got lack of experience, it goes against them. And then they get benched for someone that's experienced. But then they're still inexperienced. And they still need to gain experience to be able to play. It's a mad paradox there, people. I get, trust me, it almost it barely didn't even make sense what I just said. But you get the point, did it? See, it's mad. But hopefully you get through this, man. I'm, I'm, I, like, like I said, you guys know I like to see the progress of young players over there. Still at the club or they've departed the club. And I believe the one that I probably think's made the most in inroads in in terms of having a professional career post Arsenal would be Daniel Marlin and Ishmael Benassia. They arrived in twenty fifteen from Ajax and can't even remember his team in league in League Two in France. But either way, they arrived. One's playing um in Serie A now after getting promoted from the second division. Obviously, Marlin, you're seeing him play against Inter Milan, Barcelona, Spurs. He scored in the Eredivisie the other day and in the cup, I believe. He's making inroads. He called up to the um Holland's under twenty ones. Ironically, I think he would have played and, and featured a lot under you know Emre to be fair, in the same way that I think Gwendozi and um, Wenger would have loved Gwendozi. That's probably the one Arsenal player he wish he managed, in my opinion. But yeah. Shout I don't know if I've mentioned it as well, but shout out to Josh De Silva as well. So complete ninety minutes for the first time this season after his injury issues after joining Brentford and he scored a cracker from outside the area too. But yeah, people, there's nothing more for me to add. Let me get out of your hair. People deluded. Comment, subscribe, do the rest if you wish. People, I'm out.